Part one of Schubert and His Work. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by David Wales. Schubert and His Work by Herbert F. Pieser. Part one Forward and Beginning. And he joins the Singer Knaben. Forward a sense of helplessness and futility overcomes the writer who in the limits of a volume as unpretending as the present one endeavours to give the casual radio listener a slight idea of schubert's inundating fecundity and inspiration like bach like haydn like mozart schubert's capacity for creative labour staggers the imagination and like them he conferred upon an unworthy or rather an indifferent generation treasures beyond price and almost beyond counting outwardly his life was far less spectacular than beethoven's or mozart's his works are the mirror of what it must have been spiritually volumes would not exhaust the wonder of his myriad creations if this tiny book serves to heighten even a little the reader's interest in such songs symphonies piano or chamber works of schubert as come to his attention over the air it will have achieved the most that can be asked of it h f p schubert and his work the most lovable and the shortest lived of the great composers franz seraph peter schubert was doubly a paradox he was the only one of the outstanding viennese masters unless one chooses to include in this category the strauss waltz kings actually born in vienna and though there has never been a composer more spiritually viennese schubert inherited not a drop of viennese blood his ancestry had its roots in the moravian and austrian silesian soil his grandfather karl schubert a peasant and a local magistrate lived in one of the thirty-five towns called neudorf in moravian silesian territory and married the daughter of a well-to-do farmer acquiring by the match a large tract of land and ten children of whom the fifth franz theodor florian was destined to beget an immortal at eighteen franz theodor who was born in seventeen sixty three determined to follow the example of his elder brother karl and become a schoolmaster he went to vienna and secured a post as assistant instructor in a school where karl had already been teaching for several years in spite of starvation wages he married seventeen eighty five maria elizabeth Wietz from zuckmantel in silesia the very town whence the schuberts had originally emigrated to neudorf she was a cook the daughter of a master locksmith and she was seven years older than her husband the couple had fourteen children nine of whom died in infancy the survivors were ignaz ferdinand karl theresa and our franz peter who came twelfth in order a year after his marriage father schubert was appointed schoolmaster of the parish of the fourteen holy helpers in Wichtental, one of the thirty-four viennese suburbs or forstädte located at greater or lesser distances from the inner town which in those days represented vienna proper the schoolhouse unless it has been demolished in the late war still stands franz theodor took lodgings for himself and his family a few steps away at the house of the red crab zum roten krebse himmelfort grunt seventy two now nussdorfer strasse fifty four and since nineteen twelve a schubert museum owned by the municipality of vienna here franz seraph peter was born on january thirty one seventeen ninety seven at half past one in the afternoon father schubert's position was far from lucrative in fact it offered no salary at all nothing but a tax of one gulden a month per child levied on the parents and yet this inflexible god-fearing pedagogue imposed such merciless economies and spartan discipline on himself his family and his pupils that he not only managed to make both ends meet 
but when franz peter was four to buy the schoolhouse where he taught and to take up his quarters there in modern times the little house had become a garage though a memorial tablet placed on it in nineteen twenty eight reminded the passer-by that schubert lived and taught there for several years besides composing under its roof a number of his works among them der earl König. not the least remarkable thing about father schubert was the fact that despite the endless grind of making a living teaching and raising a family he should have found time to cultivate music yet he was a tolerable amateur cellist and his great son's first music teacher after giving the boy elementary instruction in his fifth year and sending him to school in his sixth he taught franz peter at the age of eight the rudiments of violin playing and practised him so thoroughly that the boy was soon able to play easy duets fairly well the youngster was next handed over to his elder brother ignaz who gave him some piano instruction but here an uncanny thing happened the child showed such an instinctive grasp of everything his brother tried to teach him that ignaz nonplussed confessed himself hopelessly outstripped franz for his part declared he had no need of help but would go his own way in musical matters thereupon his parents entrusted him to the choirmaster of the nearby lietenthal parish church one michael holzer who knew something about counterpoint and consumed more alcohol than was good for him it was not long before poor holzer was experiencing with his pupil the same difficulties as ignaz he had the little fellow sing and was delighted by his bright voice and his musical accuracy he let him accompany hymns on the organ had him improvise and modulate back and forth taught him a little piano and violin familiarized him with the viola clef and a few principles of thorough bass but in the end his labors were largely superfluous holzer admitted that the lad has harmony in his little finger a nearby shop of a piano maker offered a more fertile field for experiments in harmony released from the organ loft franz peter hurried to this shop and spent hours there forming chords on the keyboard he joins the sanger knaben it is not impossible that schubert may have made a few attempts at composition at this stage though there is no actual proof but a real turning point came on may twenty eighth eighteen o eight on that date there appeared in the official journal the wiener zeitung an announcement that two places among the choristers of the imperial chapel the so-called sängerknaben had to be filled father schubert saw his chance a chorister who showed the necessary qualifications could enjoy free tuition board and lodging at the imperial convict or seminary and if the boy distinguished himself in morals and studies he might remain even after his voice had changed the convict was a former jesuit school reopened in eighteen o two by the emperor franz and supervised by a branch of the jesuits called the Pierists. in addition to ten choristers there were pupils of middle and high school standing the convict occupied a long cheerless building which in modern times looked quite as bleak as it did in schubert's day the tests took place on september thirty eighteen o eight and the examiners consisted of antonio salieri a prolific opera composer an intimate of gluck and haydn a teacher of beethoven and an implacable enemy of mozart the court kapellmeister eibler and a singing teacher at the school philip corner schubert presented himself for the examination wearing a grayish smock which caused the other boys to jeer and call him a miller but as millers were popularly supposed to be musical the young mockers agreed that he could not fail they were right not only did he meet all the requirements but his voice and musicianship aroused the surprise and enthusiasm of the committee schubert was promptly accepted in other subjects required as well as in music he easily surpassed the other competitors not in vain was he his father's son so the boy shed his miller's vesture and put on the fancy gold-braided togs of the Snangerknaben. in a few days he was settled at the convict 
he was amenable to discipline having learned it plentifully at home and does not appear to have suffered the tribulations of some other convict scholars who were less conformable and more adventurous the shyness which clung to him more or less throughout his life made him shun his fellow students as much as he conveniently could the food was poor and scanty and even four years later we find him appealing pathetically to his brother ferdinand for a few pennies a month to buy a roll or an apple as a fortifying snack between a mediocre midday meal and a paltry supper eight hours later the music-room at the school was left unheated hence gruesomely cold any one who has experienced the unheated corridors of a viennese house in winter can shudder in sympathy but there was plenty of music and the school orchestra in which schubert occupied the second desk among the violins delighted him every evening this orchestra played an entire symphony and ended up with the noisiest possible overture the windows were left open in summer and crowds used to collect outside till the police dispersed them because they obstructed traffic the concerts were conducted by a singularly lovable old bohemian organist viola player and teacher wenzel Rudzitka, who at an early date defended and explained some of the boldest modernisms in schubert's compositions the orchestra performed a good deal of trivial music but every now and then there would be works by haydn mozart cherubini mehul and even some of the less taxing scores of beethoven schubert on these occasions felt himself in heaven he was entranced by the slow movements of haydn but his god was mozart with a subtlety of perception almost uncanny in a boy of twelve he said that the g minor symphony shook him to the depths without his knowing why he called the overture to the marriage of figaro the most beautiful in the whole world then quickly added but i had almost forgotten that to the magic flute it is certain that this student orchestra was a most valuable factor in schubert's musical education it was with these young players in mind that he composed his first symphony in october eighteen thirteen at the age of sixteen at a first violin desk in front of schubert there played another youth some nine years older a student of law and philosophy from linz joseph von spahn and thus began one of those schubertian friendships that was to last for life and play an important part in schubert's story amazed by the beautiful playing he heard behind him spawn looked round and saw a small boy in spectacles not long afterwards he surprised the youngster in the freezing music-room trying a sonata by mozart franz confided to his sympathetic new friend that much as he loved the sonata he found mozart extremely difficult to play another acute observation then shy and blushing he admitted that he sometimes put his thoughts into notes however he trembled lest his father get wind of the fact for while franz theodor had no objection to music as a pastime and also had every reason to be satisfied that it paid for his son's education and kept a roof over his head he had other plans for him in mind the real business of the young man's life was to be schoolmastering no two ways about it so franz peter had need to be wary besides there was another obstacle to his composing music paper was scarce and costly he did it is true rule staves on paper himself but even ordinary brown paper was not plentiful so the generous spawn though of a rather restricted budget bought paper out of his own allowance and did not remonstrate when schubert used up the precious commodity by the ream the only difficulty now was that franz composed in study hours and fell back in his schoolwork a fact that was not slow in coming to his father's notice and yet the records of the convict do not show that schubert was a poor student at various times certificates signed by the school director father innocent long pronounce him good or very good in almost everything while in greek he is even described as eminent 
somewhat later when at normal school preparing to teach in his father's schoolhouse his weaker subjects were mathematics latin and practical religion however not all the parental thundering could keep nature from taking its course even if it temporarily embittered franz's young life father schubert at one stage went so far as to forbid his son to enter his house the lad had been in the habit of going home on sundays and holidays and there taking part in string quartet concerts with his father and his brothers ignaz and ferdinand schubert himself occupying the viola desk and being the real director of the ensemble he roughly scolded his brothers when they blundered but cautiously corrected franz theodor's errors with nothing more scathing than herr vater something must be wrong here now this diversion was denied him and he suffered not until may twenty eighth eighteen twelve was he permitted to return to the lichtenthal roof-tree and then only because a tragic event softened the paternal heart on that corpus christi day franz's mother died of typhus or as they called it then nerve fever the same malady which sixteen years later was to carry off franz himself in due course the chamber music sessions were resumed and in time they outgrew their humble environment end of part one